Okay, a couple of quick topics here to wrap up uh, polarization. And we're going to go back to Fresnel reflection and look at that with respect to polarization. And so we had mentioned this previously, but we want to revisit it here since now we have a better understanding of polarization. And so, again, when you have reflection or refraction at an, at an interface, and in this case we're going to focus on Fresnel reflection, the plane of incidence is the plane in which the angles are measured. So if my light comes off like this and this, and I look at the flat plane that they form, that's the plane of in incidence. Now, for S-polarized light, the magnetic field is parallel to this plane of incidence. So the magnetic field would be oscillating this way, and the electric field would be this way, perpendicular to the plane of incidence. And so S-polarized light, calculating for now uh, reflectance, is shown as follows here. And it's plotted in this blue line versus... Uh, the angle of incidence. And so you, as you go to more and more glancing angles, eventually all the light can be reflected. Now, of particular interest when it comes to polarization is not the fact that, you know, as you increase your incidence angle, the Fresnel reflection increases, because that's, that's kind of expected for the glancing angle. But what's more interesting is for p-polarized light, where electric field is now parallel to the plane of incidence and a magnetic field perpendicular, if you plot it out here versus angle, you'll see at the special angle here called the Brewster angle right here, I think it's 57, maybe 57.3 degrees, uh, don't quote me on that, but right here, the Fresnel reflection goes to zero for the P polarized light, the red curve here, and then it comes back up again as you go to glancing angles of incidence again. And so let's look at why this might be practically important. So there's two, two wet ways this is important. First off, you can use Brewster angle to make a simple polarizer. So I could take a bunch of microscope slides or glass sheets. I could feed in unpolarized light. And the S-polarized light will always be Fresnel reflected. But if I have these at the Brewster angle, remember, for P-polarized light, that light experiences no Fresnel reflection. So the P-polarized light will get through. A little bit more for now reflection for the S polarized, more and more, but the P polarized light will make it through the system, and if I make enough glass slides, I'll only get P polarized light out this. So I made a very simple way to make a polarizer. Second reason this is important is polarized sunglasses. So why do you bother buying sun sun polarized sunglasses? Well, polarized sunglasses reduce glare off surfaces through the following mechanism. And so this is a uh, road and reducing the glare in the background through polarized sunglasses. And here's glare off a glass uh, windshield without polarized lenses and with polarized lenses. And what they do basically is they essentially know that if the light hits this at the Brewster angle, okay, it will be transmitted. And given the flatness of the surface, if I make my glass with glasses with polarizers such that I only look at that polarization of light, then all the light that's Fresnel reflected at that Brewster angle will be uh, re absorbed by the polarizer. So it basically lets the, it basically, the, the polarized lenses favor the P-polarized light, not the S-polarized light, because P-polarized light, as you saw in the previous slide, you have less Fresnel reflection, not only at the Brewster angle, but for most angle, for all angles as well. So you get less glare off surfaces. Now, other applications include polarized microscopes. What do they do? Well, they can look at things like, such as birefringence or polarization properties of materials themselves. Um, and then, of course, other applications, when you look at uh, things such as polarizers, birefringence, and, and, and things like that, we're going to talk about LCDs in a couple weeks as well. So last slide I've got here, you're lost in the desert and dying of thirst. Is this water here? What is it? Well, you know it's not, and there's something that could save you here. This is basically, um, this is Fresnel reflection off a hot surface, and if you had polarized sunglasses, you wouldn't go chasing after this because you could use it to suppress that reflection. And how this works, basically, is that if you look at the surface of the, uh, of the desert, it's very hot. So we're hot down here, and there's colder air above. And if you look at the refractive index of air versus distance, so I'll measure refractive index this way, hot air would be less dense, right? And so it would have a lower refractive index. So as you go further away from the surface, if this is refractive index, the refractive index goes up and as it reaches the cold air. 
Well, if I have a high refractive index up here and a low refractive index down here, then it's the same thing, kind of, of having a surface where I get total internal reflection where sunlight comes down, hits this surface, it sees a different interface between high refractive index and low refractive index, and it becomes reflected up as a result. And so this is basically the sky at a glance at a light angle here, which gives you total internal reflection, basically reflecting off towards you as you see here. And if you had polarized sunglasses, it would suppress that for you. Last thing is I'd like to touch on 3D displays. Um, in the PowerPoint version, you could see how you could take two separate images taken at different angles, and it'll form a 3D image. And so it shows an animation of that. And if you look at a lot of 3D movies, they have you basically use a project. There's a projector and glasses, which have a circular polarizing film that's different for the left and the right sides of lenses. And so what they do, kind of like this, is you build up two two images in, in one example, and you'll see in the example how this is taken from different angles and if you oscillate back and forth quickly enough in the PowerPoint version you can see it forms a 3D image a bit, a bit. and so how does this work? Well basically at the movie theater there's a left projector which has a polarizer and a quarter wave plate and that gives circular polarized in that light in this direction. There's a right projector that's got the opposite polarizer in the front so it gives circular polarized in this way which is the opposite of this one so here's left projector, and here's right projector. So I get two different types of circular polarization hitting the screen with two different images. Each image is each image different based on polarization of light. Then you have the glasses, which for the left polarizer lens, the polarizer is this way with a quarter wave plate in front, and for the right polarizer lens, it's got a quarter wave plate and an opposite polarizer. So for this case, the right polar lens, polarizer lens, if you look at this, the left projector light doesn't get through. Whereas for the left polarizer lens and left projector, the light gets through. So now I can basically take different images and map them to the eye. And you can see the same thing with the right here as well. And so that's how optically 3D glasses work and the projectors for that. It's more complicated if you understand how your brain interprets it, but if you look at the simple animation on the PowerPoint, you'll get an appreciation for how the two images can build up to give you the perception of a 3D image. So why not just use the polarizers alone? Why go through all this? this why, have, why put the quarter wave plates? Why can't I just have a projector that's polarized one direction and a projector that's polarized the other? Well, this is a little bit more fault tolerant in that if you look at this, this system doesn't care how you rotate the glasses because this is circularly polarized light. So it doesn't matter how it lines up with this thing, with this birefringent material, which is kind of interesting, right? And so you can rotate your glasses and get the exact same effect out regardless of the orientation of the glasses. The other thing, too, is that I think you have to use special screens for this. You can't use a perfectly diffuse or Lambertian screen because when the polarization hits the screen, it would be scattered by the screen as it goes to and, and, and reflects off the material of the screen. And so I think you need a special screen that reflects more, a little bit more like a mirror, which preserves the polarization as well. Okay, that's it. We are done with polarization. Review some of these things. The last one doesn't have to do with polarization, but you should have enough understanding, now that you understand polarizers, to figure out why we have screens on microwave ovens and essentially how they work for blocking microwaves but not visible light.